Well, we're back in Dublin, back to another work week, a regular old fucking week. Um, I have to go to the orthodontist story in my poxy life. The bar at the back of my brace is broke and I've got a chip in um, one of my bonds. This fucking tooth keeps chipping, it's so annoying, but apparently it happens. Um, but I'm actually going in to get my new retainer and I feel like, I don't know if I'm gonna get, be able to get this fixed today. It's really annoying me. Anyway, let's get this shit show done. Okay, so busy morning. I'm just at a little there. Um, do you know what? I really need to get, when we got the car play installed on this car, I like, um, we got rid of the little thing that the, the car holds the phone. I need to get that back in so that like I can actually just drive and talk. Um, once nobody rats on the cops on me. <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I did a food shop there. I went to the Asian market, I'm sure you saw. Um, love that. And um, there's this man who walks around in Port Marnock and he literally wears a full on like admiral's like suit, like a sailing man suit. And everyone knows him and he's so nice and he waves to everyone. It's so random. I think I'm gonna get more. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get more Invisalign on. Went to the ortho and look, so two days before I um two days before I went to Mexico, the bar at the back of my braces broke and he know so he was like there's a tiny bit of movement on that tooth. You know, I remember my tooth that was like kind of sticking out my little snaggle tooth. And he was like, you know, if you have another round of refinements with Invisalign, like if you want to get it done now, it'll be free. But if you want to get it done like in a few years, obviously, like or in a year even, like you're gonna have to pay like you know, a couple grand. So I was like, okay, I may as well do it now. I, I said, I've said it before, I'd happily wear Invisalign for the rest of my life. Like it, they don't bother me whatsoever. You probably can't see just that tooth. It's, I know it looks so straight here, but like that tooth, it, it just wants to go over. Like, you know, when you change your hair parting and um, it's like, you can feel it. Like, look at that. Like say that my little widow's peak, I can never keep it straight. But like, when I put my widow's peak over here where it's straight, it wants to go over there. That's like what my tooth is doing. It just wants to fucking go over. So I'm like, you know what, fuck it girls. Like, let's do it. It's coming into winter, I don't give a fuck. Like second birthday with Invisalign, peace out. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can drive and talk. You're on my little screen here and I think you're actually quite secure. But if not, I'm sure we're only in little. It's not the biggest deal. Um. So on the way home, something that never fucking happens to me, I got green lights the whole way. Like didn't get stopped at one red light. I was like, are you for real? Like this is like amazing. I just did a really bad turn there. In case you're gonna clock me, I did do a bad turn. Anyway, I got green lights the whole way. And so Ruthie Ruby, who I'm sure a lot of you guys follow, she, um, put up this Van Morrison song on her um, on her Instagram the other day and I was like, oh my God, I love that song. I've never heard of it. I love Van Morrison though. My dad, Van Morrison reminds me of my dad. He would like, when we were kids and we'd be driving like on holidays, we had two tapes in the car and it was a Beach, Boy, Beach Boys Pet Sounds, I'm pretty sure. Let me out of here, dick. Come on, let me out. Uh -huh. um, Peach Boys, Beth, Peach, Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, and Van Morrison. And Van Morrison always just reminds me of my dad. Like, it's just like my dad. And um, so anyway, she put up this song and I was like, I fucking love that song. And I wanted to listen to it on the way home. And usually when I want to find like some new music, what I'll do is like, or even just songs that I like, that like I know I like, but that um, I haven't heard for ages. Or that I, I, I've said this on Discord before, but I'm so bad at the names of songs. like. So you could be like, name me your favorite Lana songs. And I'm like, 
I only know the name of video games. Like literally, I'm so bad. I forgot the name of um, Blue Jeans the other day. <coughs> this cough since Mexico from the AC. It's fucking so annoying. Um. Anyway, so I put on this Van Morrison song and it was amazing. And I put yeah, sorry. What I do when I want to find new music is I put on like radio of a song. Which is kind of chaotic, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's kind of chaotic, it's kind of, like, I always slag Evan, because he, like, he's the type of person that will full on put his Spotify on shuffle. Yeah, he'll put his Spotify on shuffle, which I just think is, like, psychopath behavior. <laughs> I'm like, what? But, um, the radio thing, that works a treat, I'm telling you. So I put on radio of that song, the song is, TB sheets. Oh, it's so good. It's like so sexy, even though like TB sheets, I'm sure he means like tuberculosis sheets. Like you're sick. Um, anyway, uh, and, oh my God, you know when you get like your Spotify just gets you. Like my Spotify today was like so fucking good. Like every song that came on, I either like knew and loved or I was like, oh my God, I haven't heard the song in years. Or I was like, this is just like, such good music like it was like neil young van morrison talking heads fucking tom waits like i'll um i'm actually gonna make a spot uh, a playlist of some of the songs that came up today because it's it's definitely like my autumn kind of vibe you know what i mean like it's defo like autumnal even though van morrison does remind me oh my god i feel like such a youtuber talking in my car um it does remind me of summer because as i said we would drive in summer so yeah I, I'm gonna make a playlist out of those songs and I'll, I'll share it. Uh, like, I mean, just go follow my Spotify anyway because I have loads of playlists on there. Um, I have a Red Room playlist as well, which is like, obviously not episodes of Red Room because that's only on Patreon, but like it is um, like songs that are just the vibe, you know what I mean? Like the vibe of, of Red Room. Like there's like loads of David Lynchy songs on there. There's loads of Tarantino, like not their songs obviously, but like songs from their movies. Um, but yeah, and loads of other stuff, so. If you want to go follow that you can i'll link that below and through that you'll just find my spotify and then you'll see i'll make this autumn playlist or i'll link that below you just check the thing i do actually do quite like i try and do as detailed as i can of a description box on youtube i don't list like what i'm wearing or anything like that though like i just i just really feel like people do not follow me nor do i expect them to follow me for fucking fashion advice um, because I don't know how to dress myself the best time. So move your dog off the road, dude. What the fuck? I hadn't driven the car in like a month, like since that day I went out to the NDLS and I put it on the vlog. So <laughs> when I was driving out of town today, I was like kind of nervous. I was like, oh, but it is funny. It is actually like muscle memory. Like once you know how to drive, you just get in the car and you're like, oh. I can drive again. Oh yeah, so since coming back from vacation, obviously, vacation, so American. Um, since coming back from holidays, I, you know, when you come back from holidays and you're like, oh my God, new me, like, um, I'm like, I'm gonna stop drinking for a while. We didn't even drink that much in Mexico, if I'm honest. Like, I think like, well, we did the, in Cancun. The first few days in uh, Cancun, we definitely drank a lot. And in Coco Bongos, we drank way too much. Um, and then when we were in Holbush, it was so chill. We literally, like, I swear I had like a glass or two of wine a night, maybe. Like, I did not, I definitely did drink every night a glass of wine, but like literally one glass, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of like, uh, so it's coming up to my birthday. It's my birthday in like, I guess probably about six weeks. And I'm kind of like, there's nothing I'm really doing in between now and then. Um, I love Halloween, but I don't party on Halloween. Like I just love the vibe. I just love the like energy and the like spookiness. Um, but I don't like go out or go to costume parties or anything like that. So I'm probably gonna go off the booze for a while. We'll see. I was tempted literally yesterday. I was in my mom and dad's house for lunch. They're like, would you like some wine? I was like, why did I make such a big deal to Evan about going off alcohol? Because <laughs> he was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And I was like, you should. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. Because I was like, I'll drive home, don't worry. Anyway, um, yeah, but I think I am. Because like, I'm like, I just don't have the craving for alcohol at the moment. I do love a glass of wine, though. I won't lie, girls. Like, I mean, like, 
honestly that glass of wine at the end of the week um get out of my way at least uh that glass of wine does me fucking wonders but i think i'm just i'm kind of on this healthy vibe like i kind of want to be like properly like meal prep not meal prepping but like i do love to cook and i want to like cook loads of healthy meals in the next while and i want to like be like in the gym a lot for the next six weeks um i'm starting my microdosing soon so i ordered psilocybin microdosing um from a website called whole Salium. um so you know do your own research on that that's not an endorsement that's just because i know i'll get asked um but i'm gonna start that in a week or so i told adam so adam and i are gonna do it together evan's doing it as well um they're we're all doing a little microdosing vibe so i I, I told Adam I'd wait for his to arrive because he arrived, he ordered his a little bit later than mine. So his should be here hopefully by the start of next week. Um, and then we're going to start it, which I'm really excited for. Like, I think that would be cool. I think um, a bit of... I, I wanted to be proactive about seasonal depression. I don't know if any of my depression is seasonal, but, like, it definitely doesn't help the, like, long, dark days, you know? Um, so I... Last year, my mental health took an all-time plummet. Um, in October and then by November I was like fucked so I was like let's be a little bit proactive I know it's self-medication but like I'm just gonna see like why not I'll do it for a month you literally you do it for a month you take a few weeks off I'll do it for a month see if I feel better or any different and if not fine I'll probably still do it but like you know what I mean like what can you, what's there what's there to lose like and also it's like great content for the podcast anyway I'm pulling into my house now so I'll talk to you in a while Who's ready for the haul that no one has asked for? My favorite place in town, the Asian market. I fucking live and breathe by the Asian market. I haven't been so long. Um, well, first of all, if you're wondering, the Brian Thomas bag is a gift for Jack, for reminding Elle. Um, he doesn't watch my vlogs, so he won't know, but I'm probably gonna give it to him before the vlog comes out. Anyway, Asian market. So this is what I got. And all of this came to 30 euro, 32 euro. Be exact so age market's really great it's great for like any kind of um ingredients that you find hard to get especially if you like obviously cooking asian food um which i do a lot but you know you can actually get a lot of the stuff now and like super value or whatever but it's really expensive like i paid let me show you like i got this soy sauce right um not long ago in super value and i think it was like five euro right you might be like that's fine look at the soy sauce i got today like same brand both kiko man this is the gluten-free one so it's tamari um but this was six euro like the fuck so that's my first part i always 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 buy soy sauce <laughs> except for when i buy it in uh, super value i always buy it when i can in the asian market so much cheaper way better value also got um so i got some herbs they do really good value herbs so these are bay leaves i'll probably dry a few of these um, really handy to have in for all cooking. Rosemary again, like, and these were like one euro each, like so much more affordable or just better value than the ones that you get in like Super Value or Tesco or whatever. Oh, hell. <laughs> no one's seen you in so long. You're such a good girl. Then I got, oh yeah, another thing I always, always, always get is fish sauce. I love to cook like Thai curries. Uh, one of my favorite uh, like marinades that I do for chicken. I think I might do today. So maybe I'll show you how I do it. Uh, is with fish sauce and it's just it's super salty but it's a really nice um it's a really nice seasoning and it's essential if you're cooking any a any thai curries especially you have to have fish sauce oh, kimchi i'm huge i fucking love kimchi um so yeah got that don't need to talk you through it obviously again everything just it's all better value in the asian market I got some nori, um, so these are like snack size nori for like, I'm gonna make um, some sushi kind of rice bowls tonight, hence the kimchi. Um, but yeah, this again, they're all in little individual packages, uh, so it won't go off as quickly. How cool. So I had mushrooms like these, I've had them before, and I had them most recently in Ibiza, um, and they were so good. Oh my God, delicious. Oh, then I got 
So these are uh, like two, they're like cooked white rice and you just microwave it. Just handy if like I come home and like maybe Evan's not here or he's eaten or maybe we've both eaten and we just like, I've got steaks or I've got something that I'm just not bothered cooking. These are just like one portion, 300 calories, uh, 200 grams of rice. Um, and yeah, they're just in a nice little container. And then I got some sushi rice. Then to season my sushi rice, I got um, the mirin, the hoi mirin, han mirin, sorry. And this is the, uh, is this the right thing? I need mirin anyway, but oh, I got mirin. I did not get the right thing. Oh, then I got this, uh, the peanut rayu. This is an Irish brand as far as I know. Yeah, from Glasnevin. They have the, um, you can get the one, the ch the Chinese one in the Asian market, but they didn't have it. They only had the huge thing of the peanut rayu. And like, I'm not gonna eat that much peanut rayu, but this one's like way more expensive. The other one's better value. I can't remember, it has a little um, man's face on it. I got some ramen packets. Um, again, really cheap. Uh, so these are both spicy ramen noodle flavor. And then this one called my name at the very last minute, hot chicken. Um, I love my spicy ramen. I love making things super spicy. So we'll see what that is like. Um, anyways, that's all my Asian market stuff. I'm not gonna show you my like little haul because that's fucking boring as shit. Um, but delighted with this haul. Hey Google, pause music. Oh my God, I'm on such a um, Van Morrison buzz lately now since that song. Thanks Ruth. I'm gonna show you how to make my Thai, like made up though, chicken marinade. My dad taught me how to make this and it's so good and it's really, really easy. First thing that's essential is fish sauce. So I'm gonna do about like two to three tablespoons of this. Um, it's really strong, but I'm gonna be cooking four uh, chicken breasts, so. Okay, next I have a whole red chili chopped. Um, hack is to freeze your chilies. Okay, now I'm gonna get some brown sugar, about a tablespoon or so and put that in and the juice of a lime Thai uh, Thai cooking always has salt so that's the fish sauce sweet sugar heat and then um what's this like sour <laughs> anyway um and also I should have coriander in here but I don't have any and I couldn't be ours going to the shop so fresh coriander as well and then what I also like to add is a little bit of uh, ginger paste or like fresh ginger if you have some just a small bit and a crushed garlic clove i actually can't remember if these are in the original recipe but i think the recipe is made up anyway so why not add to it but i just find it adds a little bit of extra in the fridge for as long as you can for me hopefully about an hour but um as long as you can honestly overnight so nice and then what i do next after is i just brown them like on the pan uh and then put them in the oven for about half an hour and they're like so good Next day, obviously, um, I'm about to take Elle on a walk. Oh, her ears didn't even prick. Um, but I'm recording later on with Adam. Um, we finally got our episode tied down. So I'm actually excited to, uh, to record that. It's gonna be kind of like Halloween-y themed. Um, it'll be out by the time you see this anyway. Um, but I wanted to show my outfit. I got these uh, trousers. I'm crap at showing outfits, guys. Like, <laughs> is that too much for YouTube? <laughs> But I got these trousers in uh, and other stories. They're like literally like slacks, like full on slack vibes, but I think they're so cute. I wonder can I, if I see I've got a coffee table here. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, so I got these slacks. I think they're so cute. They're very like work vibes. Like I do understand that, but I think they're so nice. Um, and I got my docs on and this tank top is from Weekday, so I'm just gonna put on a little jacket. Um, I'm bringing Elle out for little walkies. Oh, look at her little face. <laughs> so this is the jacket that I wore. This is from Uniqlo, it's kind of like a utility jacket. It's like a felt material. Um, 
don't get this if you have a dog that sheds. Luckily, Elle doesn't, but I just took off so much cat and dog hair off this. Whenever I wore it last, I must have been around someone's fucking dog who shed it because it was like embedded into it. Oh, I miss some. See? So bad. It's actually so hard to get out of it. got a delivery flow state sent me out one of their new yoga mats i'm gonna get it to you so i can open it i'm so excited to see i have a good few of these uh, yoga mats already um and they're just so beautiful like i think um they're they're also like great quality i use them for yoga i haven't used them all the time i use them when i work out at home um and they're obviously a Irish company but they're beautiful because obviously al or uh, Mazer does all the artwork for them so like they're kind of limited edition drops you kind of get a piece of hanging art if you hang them on the wall they look so nice Evan has loads of them hanging in his studio let's do a little unboxing of their latest uh, number one I think they might be the same though but we'll see oh my god so pretty these new ones are like super uh, the other ones are kind of like I mean, they're like Macy's paintings, right? But like, they're like a black background. These ones are really light. Oh my God, like how gorgeous is that? Oh, the other one's the blue one. So nice. So these are, just in case you're wondering, okay? Uh, natural tree rubber, recycled. They're made from natural tree rubber, recycled bottle plastic, eco-friendly, biodegradable, water-based inks free from PVC, silicon and phthalates, machine washable, hang to dry, so don't put them in your dryer obs. Oh, so pretty. Thank you so much to Flosey for sending me these out. I absolutely love them. Um, I've got a bit of a collection going on now, so I kind of feel like I have to have one of every single one of them. But um, they're friends of ours and their product is just amazing and beautiful. So if you are a yoga head or anything like that, like I'd really recommend them. And they're just like nice to look at too, you know, but they're an investment piece. And also for Christmas, if you know anyone, they'd be a really nice gift. Hello, I'm extremely tired because what's like the mental illness where you're 32 years old and you spend your entire night on TikTok? And I'm talking until half three in the morning for no reason whatsoever. And just keep, you just keep saying to yourself, it doesn't matter. You don't really have anything to do tomorrow because I have that, whatever that is. I did that last night for the first time in so long. I like, I, I have the TikTok app, but I haven't really been going on it like at all. I just hadn't really, I just didn't care. Um, and there's Elle. Hi Elle. Um, and I spent so long on it last night. I actually found this guy's TikTok last night that was like so good. He has schizophrenia and he's an artist and he like made this schizophrenia simulator. Like it's almost like a filter, but like you can't use it. But like it's like he makes these videos and it's like how he hears voices. And I just found it so fascinating. And I went down, down such a rabbit hole on his channel, like learning about schizophrenia because I find schizophrenia like so interesting because I think it it's so um like my, most mental illnesses it is uh there's so much wrong information out there like but i think when i was younger i used to think everyone anyway that i used to know like people used to be like oh you're so schizo um when you would have like mood swings like people would think that schizophrenia is like multiple personalities or whatever and it's obviously not but so interesting anyway um i did that and i didn't wake up till oh, i don't even want to say it's so embarrassing i can't okay I didn't wake up until 11, right? Fucking, I get such guilt over that. Like if I'm not up by nine, the guilt, 
consumes me but i actually don't have much to do today well i don't have to leave my house um hence my appearance i'm gonna do a little skincare with you all i i asked did you want to see some of that on my instagram and a lot of people said yes so i'm gonna show you some skincare um and maybe do some book reviews because i read two books in my holidays and i want to talk about them um but yeah happy wednesday okay so i pulled out the camera <laughs> let's say you know i'm serious but my phone does not do well in low light and the lighting in this bathroom like this overhead lighting is just the most unforgiving thing. So morning time on my skin, I just have a shower. I don't wash my face in the morning. Like I just have like water on my face in the shower. So serum vibes, I'm at the very end of this. It was um, gifted to me, but it is their Bolimian C serum. So it's like a vitamin C. And I always heard that you're supposed to use vitamin C in the morning. So like a good little bitch, I do it. Oh, shit. So I take some of that. It smells like oranges. Beautiful syrup, nice and light. Okay, now um, I have this Ole Henderson. Um, it's another vitamin C moisturizer. I bought this one. I usually don't go for like a perfume vibe, but there's something about um, the orange that makes me kind of think that it's not fake, even though it obviously is. So I put way too much of that on. In my 30s, I've become very aware of this area so then i put on some spf um this one was sent to me recently this is not like a sent to me video but i actually just ran out of sunscreen so i used it all in mexico um and i forgot i had this one so i was like fucking pop off so uh this is keels which i do love i use a lot of keels and i've bought a lot of keels over the years so you want to use a good bit they say, what is it, a finger to like a finger length? And you always end up looking kind of white from that, but you know, we've got to protect. <laughs> we've got to protect. Have you guys seen that girl on TikTok that puts like so, like, I mean, I look. <laughs> I'm her, I am the girl. She just keeps rubbing. Okay, now we've rubbed in. That actually looks nice, like glowy. Hopefully it like sits in a bit. Um, so that's all I do in the morning. I do very minimal. Usually what I will also do is put on a bit of this Dripping Gold uh, Wonder Water because I wear the Factor 50 on my face. My face tends to be quite pale. I'm not gonna bother and I'm getting my eyebrows done on Friday. So I don't want to, you can't wear a tan when you get your eyebrows done. So I'm gonna give that a miss, but I would usually pop a bit of that on. And um, that's it. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the two books that I read on my holidays, just briefly, um, in case anyone wants to know my thoughts or if you're thinking of reading it, I'm gonna try not give away any like spoiler spoilers, but obviously like, you know, for me anyway, by hearing someone's um, opinion, it can like get in my head. So if you want a completely unbiased like look at the books, like skip ahead this section. The books I'm gonna be talking about are Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney and My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Sorry, I did have to look at her name. It just doesn't stick in my head, Do you ever get that? Um, so if you wanna to listen to these with a completely like, you know, uninformed opinion, maybe skip ahead, but if not, join me. I'm gonna discuss them briefly, not too long. So. Sally Rooney's book, obviously coming off Normal People, everyone was horny for this book. I loved Normal People. I couldn't get into conversation with friends. I might give it another go. Um, but Normal People to me was just so nostalgic. Sally Rooney and I are around the same age. We went to the same college at around the same time. Um, so a lot of that book resonated very specifically with me, but obviously with millions of people because the show is so popular. Um, but I just thought it was so well written. It just really, to me, captured... Um, you know, young love um, and all those awkwardness, all the awkward feelings around it. Um, but anyway, this is not a normal people review. This is her new book. Um, okay, so the characters, I didn't really get them. I have to say, I didn't find Alice like to be an extremely compelling character. Like I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to feel toward her. I didn't know whether I was supposed to feel sorry for her because of her like struggle with fame or was I supposed to kind of almost begrudge her a little bit Eileen or maybe a bit of both. Um, but of the two characters, I definitely found her more interesting than Eileen. Eileen to me was 
just I don't know I, I really didn't get her like her character made zero sense to me it was like she was like kind of awkward as a child but then apparently like she just I found that Sally Rooney kept mentioning things really randomly throughout the novel like she kept being like like she wouldn't mention something for so long and then it was like Alice was all of a sudden like oh Eileen was so popular in college and I'm like this like it just I don't know and I, I maybe that's the point like maybe she was trying to be like setting something up that like it's different people's perspectives um but whatever Simon again didn't it and I hate to repeat myself on the same critique on every character but those three characters just didn't really make sense to me um Simon being like this devout Catholic I found was a really strange addition um I don't know if she's trying to like like call upon this I don't know but is there I don't think there's a return to Catholicism in Ireland especially through like he's meant to be a little bit older than me maybe Evan's age I is there like maybe there is and I'm unaware but like I just didn't really get that and he was meant to work for like I guess like the uh people before profit or something <laughs> I don't know it was just bizarre um I yeah he he's just and like he's meant to be this like dashing like blonde man I'm like in Ireland like what um but yeah the three characters like I mean I enjoyed the story Felix was my, the most compelling character to me I did find it lols that she inserted this like bisexual undertone like well not undertone like it was an, it was he was an open bisexual man but like it just didn't really add anything to the book other than him and Simon having a slight flirtation it just it was you know what? it was a great holiday read I read it on my holidays I enjoyed sitting by the pool there was a lot of sex in it very graphic sex which I thought was fine it was kind of like a I was like oh my god I in my mind I was like is she kind of you know the way everyone was like hey, I'm so horny watching normal people I'm like was she really being like I'm gonna up the sex in this and it also just did give me vibes of like I'm writing this for my next Hulu deal but she's an incredibly uh successful writer so fair play to you Sally Rooney you're killing the game but I just don't know if it gripped me so yeah it made me kind of think like maybe i just love normal people because of my own personal um like connection to the story i guess but i mean a lot of people love normal people but to me maybe i'm like oh maybe it just had that nostalgic effect to me maybe i'm not that much of a sally rooney fan because i really didn't like the emails i just found them really strange like we're going one minute from like steamy sex to like them discussing the bronze age at length and like I just kind of felt like the, the two the two female protagonist the two female protagonist characters right and this could be a me problem putting it out there they just kind of seemed like the kind of people in college that wouldn't like me <laughs> and that like I wouldn't vibe with um because it was like they were trying to like one up each other in their emails of like but maybe that was the point you know because they had a struggle within their relationship possibly of like Alice being this really successful writer and Eileen kind of struggling so I understand that that could have been part of it but it just didn't come across like endearing to me whereas like if it had been maybe set up that way it would have been a bit more endearing I don't know overall the book was an enjoyable holiday read but I don't think I'll be running to buy the next Sally Rooney book. Sorry, uh, but let me know what you think below. Second book I read uh, was a book that was really highly recommended to me by a lot of people on Discord. Um, but also a good few months ago, I put up a, bo a book recommendation, like question box on Instagram. And this book came up so much. So I actually had it bought ages ago, but um, it kind of re-entered my mind on Discord because people were like, oh my God, I can't stop reading it. And I was like, okay, let's pop off. Let's read this shit. And it's My Dark Vanessa. Wow, what an incredible book. Like after reading, I think I probably would have gone easier on Sally Rooney's book if I hadn't read this directly after. It's such an amazing book. Um, the topic matter, the subject matter, like is obviously very dark. It's um, obviously about like, you know, trigger warning, like, grooming i mean it's really it, it should come with a big huge trigger warning what i did really enjoy i am that bitch by the way and let me know if you're the same i'm the person who reads the author's uh afterward after the book 
I just find them so interesting because I'm like, I read who they thank and everything. I read like Sally Rooney's thanks and she read, she thanked someone I knew and I was like, hmm. But I read uh, the author of My Dark Vanessa. I read her afterward and she was saying that like she basically worked on this novel all throughout her MFA in uh, creative writing and that um, basically when she was younger, she read Lolita and it had a really like powerful like grip on her and her kind of like how, how she saw like romantic relationships and she also struggled a lot with like people who would bash the novel because she would talk so much about like how the prose is so beautiful um, and obviously Lolita over the past few years has come under a lot of scrutiny. I still defend the novel just in the sense that it is beautiful prose and I do think that you can look at it, you can read that book with a critical eye as an adult and see that like Humbert is obviously this like deeply disturbed and deranged human being and it's from his perspective right like it's it's meant to be from the, well you can read it from the mind of a sick person now i do know that there's like a lot of critique when it comes to nabokov like because like he allegedly was into underage people i don't know i haven't done the research on that but you know if it is true like it i know it does taint the novel but it is a beautiful piece of prose um however she makes an incredible point that a lot of young women specifically find this book when they're quite young and um, again i think she's around the same age as me maybe a little bit older so i and i only say that because when the internet kind of came about there was this kind of reap uh like rejuvenation of Lolita and the movie especially it was huge on Tumblr it's how I watched the movie uh, I do love that movie with Jeremy Irons um, and you know I was lucky enough in the sense that I watched that film when I was like 18 19 but I can understand how if you watch that at 13 14 eek it could maybe leave uh, an imprint on you obviously Lana Del Rey also had like you know she wore the uh, the heart sunglasses so there was a little bit of a rejuvenation of the story with Lana Del Rey and you know a lot of her iconography is this kind of like younger woman even though albeit she is of age anyway I'm digressing completely but uh the author of My Dark, Dark, My Dark Vanessa said that like she wanted this book um to almost be like in my mind it's like almost like an accompany novel to Lolita it, and like because it is about a girl who romanticizes Lolita and ends up in a sexual relationship with her teacher when she is only 14, 15 and it's just so incredibly written. Um, it, it deals with trauma and it deals with, um, you know, assault and even like the Me Too movement and the publicizing of your victimhood like it deals with so much so well but from a perspective of someone who's trying to navigate it in real time so that's what I loved about it and um, it wasn't this kind of like I have it all figured out it was like very complicated very layered very like so much nuance in it and I think that that is like nail on the head when it comes to talking about like serious topics uh so i think because you write recovery or like dealing with trauma is never linear i'm holding the battery pack for my camera sorry um you know that's never linear and it's never easy and it's always complicated and you know i just found it amazing i thought it was such a beautiful book i thought the character vanessa's character was just so well developed you could tell that she has been working on this book for so long and this character she just knew in and out strains character again so well developed like there was not a flaw within either character i really did feel i did not think for a second eh, would they do that oh uh, is that believable there was just so many moments it's, it's it is quite hard to read if you if you have um you know sensitive sensitivities towards uh grooming or anything along those lines um it, it's quite it is quite detailed I don't so and I still find it quite hard to read and I'm okay with reading a lot of that stuff a lot of the time I, I do I really like how she kind of prefaced that or she said it in her afterwards she said you know like an accompaniment to Lolita and I thought that was so interesting because like now if you're a 14 year old it would be almost interesting to read Lolita and then read that book you know what I mean it's like it's not like eradicating Lolita but it's like a Lolita for a new generation because there is the romanticization within it because that is what sometimes people have to do to like cope with the trauma that they experienced um but there's the also the reality and you know whereas Lolita is from Humbert's um 
perspective and his voice this is obviously from the victims which i just found so powerful and incredible uh so there are my book reviews i'm starting now a little life i know i'm a i'm a, i'm a glutton for punishment apparently it's one of the most like traumatizing and like depressing books ever and i think it's a good 700 pages long it's huge well, i might have a kindle but like i've seen people holding it um so i'm kind of taking a break for now because i'm still kind of digesting my dark vanessa however there's my book reviews uh let me know if you've read them comment below we can have a little bit of a discourse in there this new era of like skincare culture wellness culture natural beauty like stripped back low coverage face it is so much worse and so much more insidious than in like 2016 when the beauty standard was like full coverage obvious makeup like i don't know if this is going to make sense but to me obvious inauthenticity like unabashed embraced inauthenticity is so much more authentic than like perfectly curated expensive natural beauty it takes 30 minutes to learn how to contour and overline your lips like almost anybody could do it but now you literally cannot be the beauty standard unless you're rich or completely genetically blessed. There's just nothing virtuous or inherently positive about spending $400 a month on skincare. It's a purity ritual, it means nothing. Like this new standard just seems to like further entrench the idea more than ever before that some people are just like born naturally better than other people. And that that somehow makes them more real or like good.